How's it going everybody? Rob here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kurt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness on our 2014 Dodge Journey. Now our Kurt T-Connector harness is going to provide us with a four pole flat trailer connector. That way we can have all the required lights to when we're towing our trailer to get down the road legally and safely. Like our tail lights, our turn signals, and our stop lights. One thing I do want to mention about our wiring is that it does not come with the brackets to mount it up. Here we're using a four pole bracket as well as a short no drill bracket because we didn't have any spots on our hitch and I always suggest mounting it not only because it gives it a cleaner look, it's ready for us when we want to tow by right by our receiver tube, but it's also going to help protect the wire from dragging, potentially getting caught on anything when you're driving down the road. Now a lot of people don't think about it, but trailer wiring comes in handy for a lot more than just trailers especially when it comes to hitch mounted accessories. Maybe there's a hitch cover, a step, or any other kind of accessory that has lights on it. Most of them have a four pole connector on the back of it. It's a lot easier to plug that into your four pole trailer wiring rather than trying to splice into your vehicle and hardwire it in. It's just a really convenient way to get any lights at the back of your hitch. And speaking of cutting and splicing, that's the one thing I really like about our wiring kit is that there is no cutting or splicing. It's gonna have T connectors, so it's gonna plug in line with our vehicle's tail lights. So the tail lights will still get the signal, but the trailer wiring is also gonna get the signal. We're gonna have one on each side that we'll plug in, and there's also gonna be a converter box that's gonna take those signals from each side, turn it into a working signal for our trailer, and at the same time, that converter box is also gonna help protect our journey's electrical system. Because let's say there was a problem on the trailer, short circuit, or anything else, that converter box is going to prevent any kind of backfeeding from the trailer into our journey so we don't have to worry about any electrical problems. Now the converter box is powered and there is a fuse holder so it's also fuse protected. Now the thing about it being powered means is that we do have to run a power wire from where we mount our converter box up to the battery that's underneath the hood. Now I know a lot of customers may feel a little bit nervous about doing wiring, especially on their vehicle, but now that we've seen what our wiring looks like and gone over some of the features, let's make sure that you do feel comfortable doing it at home and we'll walk you through how we got everything put in and the path that we took. To start our installation, we wanna open up the rear hatch on our journey. And if we come to the inside edge, just on the inside of where our taillights are, we'll find the fasteners that are holding it in place. We're gonna pull these out so we can get to the connectors. So you can see these push pin fasteners have these little notches on the end. You can grab a flat blade screwdriver or a trim panel tool. You're gonna to wanna to come underneath that notch and you're gonna to wanna to pry out the center section of the push pin first. That'll release all the tension on it and then we can come underneath the base and pull the rest of the push pin out. Now there's gonna be two on each tail light. So we'll pull this one out can be a little bit stubborn, that's why using a trim panel tool kind of helps because it'll go around the center of that push pin and make it a little bit easier to pull those out. But once we get both of the push pins out, we want to grab the tail light. Now you don't want to twist too much, you want to pull as straight back as you can. Because there are some alignment pins back here and we don't want to break them. But we're going to have two connectors on the back. The large gray one on the bottom, it's got this tab. Just kind of push down on the tab. And it should release, maybe a little bit stuck. And for the one up top, it's a little bit different. Instead of pushing down on the tab, we wanna lift upwards a little bit and then kind of push away. You can see I just use that trim panel tool. Makes it a little bit easier than trying to get your finger to pry up on that tab. We want to disconnect both of these. We'll set our tail light aside and then we can move over to the passenger side and do the same thing. So we want to grab our wiring harness now. We're going to start on the driver's side. You'll notice you're going to have a lot of different wires coming off the bottom of the converter box here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my four pole wire. It'll have the trailer connector on the end of it. 
I'm going to pass this down in between the body and the bumper here. We're just going to feed our wire all the way down until it comes out the bottom. We'll do that with our four pole wire. And we're also going to do it with the green wire. On the end of the green wire, there is going to be a T connector. So we're going to take that T connector and again, drop it down in between the body and the bumper. Just push all the slack until it comes out the bottom. Now we can bring our attention to the other T connectors that are on there. We're going to have a yellow and white wire with a T connector on it. These are going to plug directly into the wires that were coming from the taillight harness. So we can take the male and female end, match them up, plug it in, make sure we give it a quick tug, make sure it's connected well. Then we'll grab the brown and red wire connector. And you notice they're going to match as well. So we'll plug male into the female. And then our two T connectors here are going to plug into the back of the tail light. That way our harness is getting the signal from the vehicle, but it's also going out to the tail lights. Now also coming off of our converter box, we're going to have two more wires. There's going to be a black wire and a white wire with a ring terminal. We'll start with our white wire with the ring terminal first. This is going to be our ground wire. We need to attach this to a solid piece of metal on our vehicle. And actually right here, right behind where the taillight would be on this little ledge, is a pretty good spot. It'll be out of the way and we shouldn't have to worry about it interfering. So I'm going to take the self-tapping screw and a quarter inch nut driver. And I'm just going to drive the screw with the ring terminal around it directly into the body. Now, whenever you are driving the screw, you want to make sure that that ring terminal is not spinning around, but you don't want to tighten it too much to where it strips the screw out. Now, the black wire coming off our converter box is actually what's going to power our converter box. So this needs to get ran up to the battery. But obviously, this isn't enough. They do provide you with a length of 12 gauge wire so we can run it up to the battery. So before we start pushing everything down, I'm gonna go ahead and extend that wire out with a buck connector. That way we can drop it down just like our green wire and it's a lot easier to access from underneath. Now in your kit, they are gonna provide you with some buck connectors. However, these are just standard buck connectors and since it is on the outside of the vehicle, I'm actually gonna replace them with heat shrink buck connectors. They're gonna work exactly the same, except once we have our connection made, it'll provide a little bit better protection against corrosion on the inside of the connector. So we'll slide it over the wire that's coming out of our converter box, crimp it down. We can take one end of our power wire, strip it back. And then we're going to crimp that end into the other end of our buck connector. Now I'm going to use a heat gun to shrink down my buck connectors. And if you're using a heat shrink buck connector and you're using an open flame like a torch or a lighter, you should be extremely careful not to burn or char the wire or the connector. Then we want to find the free end of our black wire. We're going to pass it down just like we did with our four pole and the green wire. And we're going to pass it down until we can get to the very bottom of the body, grab a hold of it, and we can pull the rest of that slack through. And we also need to mount our converter box. Now right here, this is a pretty wide opening here. We can actually attach our converter box either to the bumper here or to this flat spot on the body. Now they do provide you with some double-sided tape. I always suggest wiping down the box, make sure it's nice and clean, and then as well as whatever surface you're gonna be sticking it to, 
That way we don't have to worry about any dirt interfering with the glue that's on the tape. So wipe down the area real well. And grab the double-sided foam tape. Peel the backing off one side. And stick it directly to the converter box. I'll remove the backing off the other side. I'm going to stick it right against the body here. Now you do also have the option of using a self-tapping screw, a zip tie, just about whatever you can through that eyelet on top. But again, with the double-sided foam tape, you can just put it right inside that pocket there. Be nice and protected, and it won't interfere with us putting the taillights back in. But with our connection made over on the driver's side, we can go ahead and take our taillight and we can plug the connectors back in. Again, give them a quick tug, make sure they're locked in. And we can just take the excess wire, kind of tuck it behind the taillight, get everything to line up. Push your taillight assembly back in place, and then just simply replace the push pin fasteners. One thing I will say is when you're putting the push pins back in, you do want to leave that center section sticking out until your push pins all the way in, and then push the center to lock it down. Now we can move underneath and we're gonna route our green wire over to the passenger side and hook it up the same way. And the four pole wire, we wanna route at least towards the center of our hitch. So whenever our wires came out down at the very corner, we ran our four pole and our green wire over to the passenger side. Now there's a lot of heat sources back here. We got the exhaust that's at the very back. So what we did was we actually went over the top of the actual bumper structure the very back of the frame here, you can see went over the top of it and actually came out right behind the spare tire. We continued to run it along the back side till we got to the passenger side frame rail. And again, we went over the top of that and we passed our green wire up in the same corner and just connected it on the passenger side. Now I do suggest that you tie up all of your excess wires in the taillight housing pocket. That way we don't have to worry about it coming down and causing a problem later on. Another thing is, is you'll notice that we just left our four pole wire loose right now. We just want to get it to at least this area, but we're going to be mounting ours with the bracket. So we don't really want to spend too much time cleaning the wires up now. We'll do that once we have our bracket mounted. So now we can bring our attention to our black wire. Now again, this is going to need to be ran up to the battery. Fortunately for us, we have a positive post on the driver's side up by the firewall. So we need to run this up there, but again, we need to watch for damage of the wire. So we want to stay away from any major heat sources or any moving parts like the steering or suspension. So we're going to go ahead and run our wire and then we'll show you the path that we took. For my power wire, I ran it over the bumper beam, just like we did with our four pole, except instead of going to the passenger side, I started routing it towards the front. Now, right on the inside of the frame rail, there's a harness that's already there from the factory, and it has some heat insulation tape around it. So I actually taped my wire to the back side of that using some zip ties. I ran it along, keeping it as high as I could away from the muffler. And once I got to the rear sub frame and the rear axle and all the supports, I went over the top of it and it came down towards the outside edge. And I actually went over my fuel tank filler neck, started rounding it along until I got to this panel, went around the fuel tank. And fortunately, there was a bunch of lines that are already there, so I used a few zip ties and just followed those lines. And as they continued forward, just started using some zip ties to secure it down. And then finally, I have the rest of my length of wire stopping right by this body mount and the subframe cradle 
in the front. Now you'll notice that I have a airline tube coming down from the top of the engine bay. And if you look, these lines that we followed, they actually go up over to the driver's side or to the left side, and then they go straight up against the firewall. So I just took my airline tube and ran in behind it. That way I could feed it up into the engine bay. That way we can attach our wire and get it to the top. Now again, you just may be very mindful of how you route your airline tube or whatever you're using. You can use a coat hanger, pretty much whatever you have available to get from the bottom to the top and have a clear path where it's not going to get damaged. But we'll take the end of our wire and we want to attach it to our airline tube or whatever you're using as a pole wire. I'm just going to use some electrical tape. So when we start pulling on it, it won't get lost and drop back down at the bottom. But now we can move up top and we want to pull all the slack up into the engine bay. And once you start pulling the wire up, you want to make sure that it's all up in the engine bay. You don't want to have a wad of wire underneath that could get caught on something while you're driving. So it's not a bad idea to double check underneath. Once you have all your wire up, what I like to do is find a solid point. And here we have a thick wire and I'm going to take a zip tie. I'm actually going to anchor it to that. That way there is any slack, it'll prevent it from going back down and it'll keep it in the engine bay. So you just wanna find a point that's pretty high in the engine bay against the firewall, get your cable nice and taut and then anchor it down. So again, if there is any slack, it'll be in the top side of the engine bay and we don't have to worry about it going back down, causing any issues down the road. Now the positive pose is actually right here. It's right in front of and just to the left of our brake reservoir right behind the air box. So we go ahead and lift this cover up, kind of swing it out of the way. And I like to estimate about how much wire I need. And we can cut the excess off. And then we'll strip back the end of it. I'm going to grab another butt connector. Again, I'm going to be using a heat shrink butt connector to replace the one that's in the kit. Crimp it down. We want to grab the fuse holder that's in our kit. Now you want to make sure that the fuse is not in right now. The ends do come pre-stripped. Maybe a little bit of insulation is still stuck on there. You just pull it off. But this end, one of the ends from our fuse holder is going to go directly into the butt connector. Give it a quick tug. Then on the free end of our fuse holder, we're going to grab the large ring terminal out of our kit, slide it over the wire, and we'll crimp that in place. Now at this point we need to remove the nut that's on the positive post here. So we're going to grab a 15 millimeter socket or we'll remove it. Now again, at this point, you want to make sure that the fuse is not in there. We don't want to cause any shorts. So we'll slide our ring terminal over the stud. And we're going to replace the nut and tighten it down. And now with everything connected, and take that fuse, slide it into the fuse holder, close everything up. Now that we have everything connected, we can take a little bit of time. We can tie up our fuse holder, just give it a clean look in here so we don't have so many loose wires, and also mount up our four pole. Now, since we don't have a physical spot on our hitch to mount our wiring, we're going to be using a no-drill bracket. These are actually pretty easy to use. You'll see there's a little lip on the back. It's going to hook onto the back of the hitch. Can't put it in the lower position 
or in the upright position. It just kind of depends on where you want your plug to be mounted. I'm going to put mine on the bottom, see how that works. And then we'll take our clamp. It's just like a big hose clamp, so just go around the hitch. Have it come back around. And then we'll feed it back into the other side of the clamp. I like to get them at least loosely started because as you can see, the bracket tends to move around a lot. So it can be a little bit difficult if you're trying to keep everything perfectly lined up. And once we figure out exactly where we want it positioned, we can tighten that screw down. You want to use a 5 16th socket or nut driver. And I do suggest going kind of slow when you're first tightening it up. It'll give you a little bit of wiggle room so you can get that bracket to sit how you want. And you can see it's a nice solid connection point. We can always trim off the excess clamp here. Now to mount up our actual four pole wiring, we're gonna attach a four pole mounting bracket to our no drill bracket. Now I'm gonna go ahead and have mine in the upright position so it'd be nice, a clean line going across in line with our hitch. So just pass the included screws down through the four pole bracket, line it up with the no drill bracket. Then we'll take a locking nut and apply it to the bottom. Now fortunately those are locking nuts so you should just be able to hold that screw with your finger and take a 3A socket and tighten it down. Now before you put your four pole wiring into the bracket if you are using one you definitely want to attach your dust cover because once we have the four pole in the bracket you can slide the dust cover over, but it's not gonna be positioned to where it'll hold very well and it potentially could come off. This way, our dust cover is gonna be behind the bracket, so we don't have to worry about it coming off. So I'm gonna take my four pole, and we're gonna feed it through the bracket, and you'll kinda notice how there's those ridges on the top and bottom. On the four pole connector itself, we had these little ridges, and that's what's actually gonna be holding it in the bracket, is a bunch of tension. So we need to push it to where those tabs are coming out past the bracket, and it'll lock it into place. So it will take a little bit of wiggling, but you can see once it's in there, you can push on it, it's not gonna fall through. So now you just wanna take a little bit of time and tie up any of this excess four pole wire. I do suggest tying it as high up in the body as you can, even if that means pulling all the slack back to the outside because our exhaust is extremely close and we don't wanna interfere with our spare tire when it comes down or if we had to put it back or anything like that. Now the final step after you get your four pole mounted and you have everything routed the way you'd like is gonna be testing the circuits. So I'll go ahead and turn on my headlights see our taillight function is working, the left turn signal, the right turn signal, and our brakes. All we have left to do now is hook up to our trailer and hit the road. But again, I'm Rob here at eTrailer.com. That'll finish up your look at the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness on our 2014 Dodge Journey.